there were so many great men who wanted to do good and do right by the kids. After the late 80s, early 90s, the city hadn't done anything. It gave me discipline. It helped me to become a man. I wanted to build a team the way it should be. They took the room and, and they dissolved it. And then I left. Our investment is in youth. There was no space, there was no mats, there was no resources. We had what we needed. We had what we needed to succeed. That was the experience of so many city coaches. The Navy Pier was a welcoming place for anybody who wanted to go and wrestle. And it was this just warehouse, a former storage facility that they cleared out, put a boxing ring in, had a basketball court, and, they, and a couple of wrestling mats. It was the home to the Mayor Daily Wrestling Club, which I think was 11 or 12 time AAU national champions. Countless NCAA champs were in the room. World team members came out of there, Olympians, Olympian, you know, world medalists. We train off season, we go together and look. Like Ortiz's brother Henry had a Volkswagen. We tried to fit six guys in that Volkswagen, drive down the Navy Pier for tournaments. And that. Thousands of people are filing into Navy Pier right now. If today's crowds are any indication of the toughest thing, we'll be getting there. Maybe you see 50, 60 guys out there, two mats. When I got there with Norm Parker, I go, you know, how does this work? You go, just find a guy your size and ask him if you want to roll around. We have people coming from all over, from the south side, west side, north side. That community was strong and I wanted to be a part of that. You couldn't imagine who was there. Guys from all walks of life down there on a, on a Monday night. But it was also available to the city kids. A city kid could walk into a gym, scratch his name down on a piece of paper and step out on the mat with these guys. A lot of those guys from the inner city never, they were never introduced to wrestling on a, a fifth, sixth grade, seventh grade level. These city kids had free access to world-class technicians, world-class mentors, world-class coaches that ultimately shaped them and changed them. We looked at as brothers and, all, and we backed each other. These guys were special men today. It's $15,000 to get David Taylor to walk in the door. Every story you hear from Doc, Ozzy, Carm, Rudy Salinas, any of these guys that are on this wall behind me, it involved a coach who was digging in his own pockets to train and compete. Coach Peterson, Ernie Thompson, Willie Myers, they show me what a man integrity and man loyalty and man of honor is. They gave me some insight about what did I want to do in life and not just get caught up in what was going on in the community. We had what we needed, you know. We had what we needed to succeed. They've had opportunity, an opportunity when it meets resources and a great leader changes lives. I had another one, but I don't know what happened to it. It was 80, 80, 1989. Lakeview didn't have a wrestling team anymore. It was kind of fizzling out. 1992 is 93. And I wanted to give back what my coaches gave back to me. The room was built in 1990. We built it. Yes, yeah, so this is the kids I had I coached. Carm had created in this kind of bastion of light, that, that kind of like space of hope and just incredible place. The kids did all the artwork. It was beautiful. We had world-class wrestlers come in. They marveled at the room. They took pictures of them. I wasn't building these kids just for wrestling. I was building them for their lives to come. The city opened its books today for the first time in a while, and the picture wasn't pretty. There's a $538 million deficit. Vacant eyesores waiting years to be redeveloped. First budget as mayor of Chicago, and he's calling it the people's budget. The assistant coaching stipends had been stripped. There was no space. There was no mats. There was no resources. Went back to coaching at Dunbar in 92. When we spoke with the principal, me and Doc said, hey, we just want to give back. We want to come back and help our alma mater. 
They wouldn't even give us a room to wrestle with. They had us wrestling in front of the assembly hall and we had nothing to work with, so we, we, we didn't go back. They didn't then take that field house and build another one on the west side or the north side. They just took the spaces. I mean, we told them, we, we, we want to help these kids, but you got, you got to help us. They didn't. They, they, they'd rather just see the program die. They took the room and, and we just, they dissolved it. And then I left. The kids were disappointed. They didn't want me to leave. And I said, I was sorry. I, uh... I want to do something for the city, kids. I wanted to give back what my coaches gave back to me. Without a single thought, it was just ripped from him, from the kids. And that was the experience of so many city coaches who were handcuffed in every way.